Hi, I'm Kayla Hansen and I'm an engineer with the National Precast Concrete Association. Today we're here at Champion Precast Plant in Missouri to talk about aggregate moisture content testing. And with me here today is Ron Burr to help show us how things are done here at Champion. Thanks for taking the time to speak with us today, Ron. You're welcome. Glad you could be with us. So before we get started, we need to make sure that we have the proper PPE for the job. We've got what we need and we're ready to head over to where we store our aggregates. All right, let's go. So what type of concrete do you produce here and what type of aggregates do you use? We produce conventional wet cast in our old plant and in our new plant we produce SCC. Our uh, aggregates are three quarter inch and our fine aggregates are traditional river sand. So these are pretty common aggregate types and sizes in the precast industry and it's important to make sure that your aggregates are clean and that they're hard, stable and non-reactive with any other ingredients in your concrete mix. Let me show you some of our aggregates. This is our three quarter inch clean aggregate. So you can see here that there isn't much residue left in his hand. So could you tell us a little bit about how your aggregate is stored here? Sure, our aggregates are stored in these underground pits behind us. Uh, we have two bins, one for the coarse and one for the fine aggregate. So depending on the plant, aggregate can be stored outside, inside, or even underground. First, no matter where the aggregate is stored at your plant, you want to minimize the possibility of cross-contamination between different aggregates. Cross-contamination is when the different aggregate sizes become mixed. Second, if the aggregates are stored in bins outside, we also need to avoid contamination from any underlying soil. Dirty or dusty aggregate of any kind can cause poor bond between the aggregate and the cement paste and can weaken the concrete matrix. And third, it's important to prevent aggregate particle size segregation. Segregation is when the larger size coarse aggregate pieces become separated from the smaller size coarse aggregate pieces and they're no longer blended. So first, could you tell me what you do to help prevent cross-contamination here at Champion? Uh, one thing we do is we mark our bins uh, with these signs so that when the drivers come to deposit the material in the underground pits, they know where they go. So oftentimes, aggregate stockpiles are stored outside and above ground, so here are some best practices for those situations. So if the aggregates are stored in bins outside and above ground, make sure the stockpile walls are tall enough so that even when a new delivery is deposited into the bins, the aggregates can't spill over into the other bins. It's also a best practice to line the base of the stockpiles or construct them on a concrete pad so the underlying soil won't contaminate or dirty the aggregate. Also, watch out for other contaminants in the stockpiles. Leaves, twigs, or trash in the stockpiles could easily make their way into your concrete products. So if you see debris in the bins, remove it. Also, if your aggregate stockpiles are kept outdoors, make sure the aggregates are stored in horizontal layers rather than cone-shaped piles. When they're stored in conical piles, the aggregates can segregate as the larger pieces will roll to the bottom of the pile. When the aggregates are stored outdoors, it may be necessary to mist the stockpiles with water in the warmer months or cover them with tarps in the cooler months. More tips and best practices on hot weather concreting can be found in ACI 305 and cold weather concreting tips can be found in ACI 306. So let's head on inside and check out the bins. All right, let's go. So here we are inside underground next to the aggregate storage bins. So Ron, what else can be done to help prevent aggregate particle size segregation? Uh, another thing we do is we move our material as little as possible manually. Uh, the materials are dumped in the underground pits here where they're emptied onto this conveyor belt and they're run up to the hoppers and from there they're dumped onto the conveyor belt once again where they're weighed out and transported to the mixer. And these are great tips because the less we move the aggregates and the less we handle them, the less likely they are to segregate. So let's talk about how you collect your aggregate samples. Sounds good. We'll head this way where I do that. All right, let's go. So behind me are the bins where the material is deposited on the conveyor belt, and this is where I gather my samples for moisture content of the coarse and fine aggregates. And uh, we do that as close to the moisture probes as possible, and I've actually already gathered those samples and they're waiting for us in the QC lab. Great. So let's review what a representative sample is. A representative sample means that the aggregates that we collect and test need to have the same characteristics, including moisture content, as the rest of the aggregate that will be going into our batch of concrete. We need to be careful to not just collect really dry or really wet aggregate and to not just collect the larger pieces of coarse aggregate or just the smaller pieces of coarse aggregate. The sample should represent the conditions of the rest of the aggregate in the stockpile. And in order to collect a representative sample, we need to make sure we're following the correct sampling procedure. 
all the sampling procedures, including how to collect a representative sample from storage bins with or without mechanized equipment, are outlined in detail in ASTM D75. Great, so let's head on over to the QC lab and we'll get started with our test. All right, let's go. So here we are in the QC lab with Kenny Gamble. We have all of our equipment set up and ready to go. Yes, and it's, it's, uh, what we're going to do here today is going to determine what the moisture content is in our coarse and fine aggregate. And the reason why that's so important is because uh, we have to have our cement and water ratio exactly where it needs to be for that particular mix in order to get a good, a good concrete, a good finish out of it. And uh, what we're going to do today is we're going to see how much exactly uh, we have to take away or put into the mix of water I'm, I'm speaking of. And uh, doing this is we're going to see exactly how much water we have entrapped in our, in our coarse aggregate. And if you would like to know more about how aggregates can hold water, aggregate moisture states, and how they affect your mix, check out the webinar on the NPCA website titled, In Any Weather, Adjusting Batch Water to Account for Aggregate Moisture Content. So let's get started. The most common test method used to test aggregate moisture content is ASTM C566. This can be used on both coarse or fine aggregate, so this is the test method that we'll use today. You can also follow ASTM C70, but this is only applicable to fine aggregates. Yes, and today we are going to be using uh, ASTM C566. Uh, some people may use a, a microwave or a, a hot plate. Here at Champion Precast, we use propane with, with burners. We also have a, a spoon that we use for stirring, and uh, we, uh, you can't get the heat too hot because if you do, it, it could pop on you or whatever, you know. Uh, I have lids actually to cover them up to keep that from happening because two reasons, I don't want to get burnt, and another reason is I don't want it to throw off my, my, my uh, percentage. And uh, we also, you also need a pen, you need a piece of paper, and unless, of course, you're a lot smarter than I am, I need a calculator as well. So this first test will be done on the course aggregate. Kayla, what we're doing today is we're going to see what the moisture content is of our coarse aggregate. And the way that we need to do this is first of all, we need a scale, of course, and we make, got to make sure it's zeroed out. If not, it's really going to throw our numbers off, you know, at the end. And then we're going to take our coarse aggregate, as you can see here, our coarse aggregate, and we're going to pour it into, which is already zeroed out, which means it takes away the, the pot weight. And this will tell us exactly what kind of material, what the size of the load of material we have in here. And uh, then what we're going to do next is we're going to put it on the burner and start it up and keep it at a low temperature, of course, steady temperature. Okay. So here we go. There we go. So as Kenny is heating the sample, keep in mind that rapid heating can cause some aggregate particles to explode. So it's important to follow ASTM C566 carefully and keep the temperature steady. So Kenny, how do you know when the sample's completely dry and it's ready to go? Well, Kayla, what I usually do is I, I, I get my wet aggregate and I cook it for 45 minutes to an hour and uh, it starts looking really good and dry. So I, I take it off, weigh it, put it back on for another additional 15 minutes and wait again. If it hasn't changed none, I, I call that good. And so far it's worked out really well for us. Well, great. So this is now considered an oven dry sample. And this means that the aggregate is completely free of moisture. All moisture stored in the aggregates pores and on the exterior of the aggregate has evaporated. The unit weight or weight per cubic foot of this oven dry aggregate is constant. If we collected another sample and dried it this way, we would record the same oven dry aggregate weight per cubic foot. We dried it to the point where there is no water left in the pores or on the exterior surface. Okay, Caleb, if you don't mind, how about the, we just put the dry material on the scale. And this is going to tell us, since now we got the dry material, and uh, we know what the wet was because we, record, we recorded it earlier, uh, we can determine what the moisture content was in, in this rock, in this uh, coarse aggregate. And you know, it's hard, to, it's hard to believe that as hard as that rock is, it does have pores in it to where it does have water in it, and this here helps us get it out. And that will help us with our mix and to get exactly the water and cement ratio that we need for that mix. 
So our original coarse aggregate sample weight was 2,000 grams, and our oven dry coarse aggregate weight was 1,972 grams. The difference between these two weights is all water weight, which was held by the coarse aggregate. The weight of the water equals the weight of our wet sample minus the weight of the dried sample. Then to find the aggregate moisture content, divide the weight of the water we burned off by the weight of the dried sample and multiply it by 100%. This will give us a result as a percent. Based on this calculation, the moisture content is 1.4%. The absorption capacity of this aggregate is 1.6%, and this value can be found on the aggregate delivery ticket as we see here. The absorption capacity tells us how much moisture the aggregate is capable of absorbing in its pores. The moisture content we calculated is 1.4%, and the absorption capacity of our coarse aggregate is 1.6%. The moisture content is less than the absorption capacity, which means the aggregate pores contained some water, but they were not full, which is considered to be an air-dry moisture condition. So being air-dry, our coarse aggregate will absorb some of our mixed water, so we need to adjust our mix and add some extra water so we can maintain our required water to cement ratio. Yes, and Kayla, we're on our second test here we're gonna be doing is on our fine aggregate, and we're gonna try to find out what the moisture content is of our sand. Now the important thing is, I want, I want everybody to realize here at Chanton Precast anyway, when we stir our mix, sometimes you get some leftover on your spoon that sticks from the sand. The sand's really bad about that. So the best thing you do is knock it all off, make sure it's off, because it will, after a little while, you keep doing that, uh, it's gonna throw your, your percentage off a little bit. And that's something we don't wanna do. Okay, the uh, fine aggregate now is oven dried, as we can see here and all of the moisture is completely air dried, oven dried out of it. And we'll put it on the scale here to, to get the weight of the, of the dried material. So we need to perform our aggregate moisture content calculation again, starting with finding out how much moisture this aggregate sample was holding. Our original fine aggregate sample weight was 2,000 grams. The oven dry weight of our sample is 1,886 grams. The difference between these weights is all water weight again. The weight of the water equals the weight of our sample minus the weight of the dried sample. Then to find the aggregate moisture content, divide the weight of the water we burned off by the weight of the dried sample and multiply it by 100%. This will give us a result as a percent. Based on this calculation, the moisture content is 6%. The absorption capacity of this aggregate is only 0.7%, which is less than the moisture content. This means the aggregate pores are completely full of water, reaching 100% absorption, and it was holding extra water on the surface. The aggregate has exceeded its absorption capacity. This means the aggregate's moisture condition is wet. Being so wet, this aggregate will contribute some water to our mix, so we need to adjust our batch, hold back some water so that we can maintain our water to cement ratio. Well, Kayla, now that we are done with our fine aggregate and our coarse aggregate uh, uh, moisture content test, uh, now we can go do the math and figure out how much water we got to add or take away. And before we get started, just as important as doing these tests correctly is making sure that we perform them at the proper frequency. If you don't have moisture probes or automatic mixing water adjustment systems, the aggregate moisture content test must be done at least once per day on each aggregate prior to making the first batch. If you're producing self-consolidating concrete, you must conduct an additional moisture content test on each aggregate every four hours thereafter while still producing SCC. If you do have moisture probes in your aggregate bins, the moisture content test must be done at least weekly to validate the probe's calibration. These probes must also be calibrated at least annually. The last step is the calculations. It's important to go through these carefully and this can take some time if you've never done them before. So for a detailed step-by-step -step explanation of how to perform these calculations, check out the NPCA website and on there is a webinar called In Any Weather, Adjusting Batch Water to Account for Aggregate Moisture Content. This explains the calculations in detail. So as Ron and Kenny have shown us, aggregate storage, sampling, and moisture content testing are vital parts of producing quality precast concrete. So Kenny, thank you again for having us here today and showing us how to do it all. Well, we appreciate you coming. So remember, first, be sure to follow aggregate storage best practices. Second, make sure you always get a representative sample of aggregate. Third, identify the aggregate absorption capacity from the aggregate documentation. Fourth, make sure the scale is zeroed before weighing your samples. And fifth, make sure to perform moisture content tests daily if you don't have probes in your bins. 
So for more information on aggregate sampling and testing, visit us at precast.org or feel free to give us a call. Thanks for watching.